So here's a kind of a plausible uh, matrix for that. And so I guess what's striking about this matrix is that it has some minus infinity, which is uh, pretty weird. Uh, but it's not that weird because, like we saw before in my value set in the history, minus infinity is there to be like the, uh, the additive identity. So minus infinity maps with anything is going to be going to be whatever the, the guy wants. Right? And um, what does it have to do with this kind of um, restaurant scenario? Well, I suppose the idea would be that uh, maybe person one is not willing to take the food that person two is currently got, no matter what. So maybe person one is a vegetarian, and person two's food contains the meat. And so as a result, you just you can't consider assignments which use these minus infinity. So, anyway, so we tried to work out what the, what the permanent is, and the kind of the sort of ridiculously expensive way to do that would be just to try every single possible assignment. And what does an assignment look like? Well, it's a permutation. It's a permutation. And what does a permutation look like? Well, it looks like a set of disparate assignments. And so these arrows are just showing us how we're moving around the plates, and then we can kind of assign the weight associated with each one of these assignments is just the sum of the uh, of the weights on the red arrows. And the optimal one happens to be this guy here, and that's going to weigh 23, so the permanent of this matrix is So, the next thing I want to define is a kind of sub-assignment, or what I'm going to call a poly cycle. So the idea here is that rather than having an assignment on the, on the whole graph, I'm just going to take a subset of the vertices and have an assignment there. So here's an assignment on these three vertices, here's an assignment on these three, here's an assignment on those two. And so, like before, uh, a full assignment is a set of disjoint cycles which tile the whole vertex set. A sub-assignment or a polycycle is just any set of disjoint cycles. It doesn't necessarily cover the whole set. And so these polycycles turn out to be really important with the character to polynomial. And what happens, what I need to say about them, I just need to define their weight and their length. And so their weight is just the sum of the edge weights in the obvious way. So this one has got 3 f1, f2, and then their length is just the number of uh, the number of edges. So this is a 3, this is a this one's interesting because this one here has kind of got the best value in terms of weight per length, and that turns out to be important. So if you've read anything about the dynamical system side of Maxwell's algebra, this is the critical cycle. So it's the cycle with the, the best weight to length ratio. So that's always going to be a, uh, a sort of a kind of an important point cycle in some sense. Um, so, yeah, so why did I say all that stuff? Well, like I said at the beginning, we're going to define eigenvalues from this algebraic perspective of a characteristic polynomial. And the characteristic polynomial is this guy here. And so this is really the kind of direct max class analog of the regular uh, characteristic polynomial. So rather than a determinant for a permanent, and rather than i times z plus a, well, we still have i times z plus a, except times and plus have got this slightly different meaning. And um, I'm claiming that if we, if we work this matrix out and expand the permanent, what we'll end up with is an expression which can be written down like this. So that it's uh, the maximum over all of the uh, polycycles the weight of the polycycle is z times n minus the length of the polycycle. So this is a piecewise affine function which is in some way coded in all of these polycycles. So I'm not going to prove that, uh, but I'm going to kind of hopefully convince you it's true with this simple example. So if my matrix is this kind of general 2 by 2 guy, uh, i times z, well, the identity matrix in maximal size where it's got minus infinity is off the diagonal and zero is off the diagonal. And so that's because minus infinity is the additive identity and zero is the multiplicative identity, so that makes sense. And it really does fix vectors if you multiply by all the different rules. Um, Timesing by z means adding on z, and zero adds z is z, and minus infinity adds z is minus infinity, so that's what we think that. And then we're adding on a. And if we take, then take this matrix uh, class, well, by definition, the minus infinity acts as the additive inverse, so that's why it goes away there. But we keep the z's. The a's, so now I just need to expand the permanent, and so to do that I'm going to sum over the different permutations, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix, there are only two permutations. So I first I've got the even permutation, so I get a plus z times d plus z, and then if I do the determinant, I have a minus, but I can't have a minus, so I just have a plus, and then I have the other permutation, so it's plus b times z. So you can actually multiply these brackets using the kind of regular rules, because there's a distributive law, and you end up with something that looks like this, which you can write down in regular algebra, and it looks like this. And so this is looking a bit nicer now. So you've got a, a term of 2z, term a plus.